I'm Mike's wife, Sarah, from the School of Self-Reliance, and today we're going to talk about bug out bags for little guys. This is about bags for two to five year olds in that age range. My little boy is three, so I've designed a bag for his bug out needs based on a Condors Level 3 Assault Pack. Things to remember when you're designing a bag for your child is the fact that you're not designing a bag for an adult. You might put in fire starting kits and knives and cordage and things like that in your bug out bag, but your child can't use those. He's too little. You're not going to be able to put a knife in there and, and have them carry it around. They're going to end up hurting themselves. Cordage, they're not going to be able to use to make their own shelter or string up you know, traps and snares. They can't do that. They're little. So you need to design your bag around their needs. What does your child need to stay alive with you in tow? Alright, let's get into this bag and I'll show you some of the items I put in here for my son. Now remember when you do your bag for your child, you need to base it on that child's age level, their needs, and if they have any medical conditions or anything you need to be concerned about. One of the first things I put in is everything is in little plastic bags. Hey, in the bag. oh. It makes it easy for my child to get into the bag and find things if he needs it, or another adult to be able to find things should my child be separated from me or his father. Yeah. This bag, I have in here, I have some Tylenol and ibuprofen, and these are designed for his age group. They're not adult medicine, they are children's ibuprofen and children's Motrin, children's Tylenol. I also have in here some lotion. My child has a very bad reaction on his cheeks, it's called eczema, and I tend to keep some of that in there for him because he tends to break out. And you want to keep your child comfortable. If your child comes down with a fever, they have a mild injury, you want to be able to treat that when you're on the go. But you might not be able to stop at a pharmacy or a doctor's office. So I keep some medicine for my child. Another thing I keep in here is a small bottle of suntan lotion. Children are very, very prone to sunburning. They don't tan as well as adults do, so you want to keep them from getting sunburned, especially if you're out moving through the woods during the daytime. Another thing I keep in here is a small bottle of liquid vitamin. Your child needs vitamins. They're not going to be able to eat a full meal if you're on the move the way they do at home. So to supplement some of their vitamin mineral deficiencies that they could happen, I keep a small bottle of vitamins just for them. I also keep a digital thermometer in here. Yes, the battery can die on that, but for the time being, you have a thermometer. You can always get a regular alcohol filled thermometer if you'd like. Being able to take your child's temperature is important. The sixth container I keep in here for my son I have a bag full of snack items. Some of these snack items that I really like are some of the, we call these squeezy pouches. There's several different brands out there. You can find them at your local grocery store. I like them because they're made out of mylar. And you can get fruits, you can get vegetables. This one happens to be a chicken casserole. It's a complete meal in a bag. It's perfect for little guys. These are also great because if you have a younger child, there's maybe one or two, and can't eat quite solid foods yet, this still gives them a good meal for um, their age group. But this also works for my son who's three because he gets a whole meal in a Mylar pack. A couple other things they keep in the, some of his pouches. This is the electrolyte powder. This is basically like Pedialyte or Gatorade but for children. You can get them in individual little packs at a local pharmacy or grocery stores usually have them too. You want to have this in case your child gets dehydrated. You want to keep their electrolytes balanced up, and these are really easy as long as you got water, you just add water and you're ready to go. A couple of things I keep in here. You can get oatmeal, cream of wheat, things like these are great for little guys. Just add water again, you can boil them, fix them a quick meal. It's something that's comfort food they like and they're easy to eat. They'll stay for a long time in your backpack, and they're small and they're compact. I also keep my kids eating utensils in here. Yes, they're plastic. I know they're not you know, stainless steel like a metal mess kit would be in a bug out bag for an adult, but these are something he likes and they're familiar to him. And that's something you want to have is familiarity to your child. This keeps them from being upset and stressed out in a bad situation. Some other things I keep in here, I keep him water rations. Your child's going to need water just like you, so you might as well keep some water on there in your bag for your child. I like these because they're J-Tracks. They're also in Mylar bagging. I've double bagged them just in case you should pop one. If you do, then you're not wetting down your whole pack and any clothes or other items you have in the bag for your child because it's now sealed. Now, 
Now remember I said something about your children can't have knives? I have a little small pair of safety scissors in here for my child. They can cut minor things like their bags of food open or their bags of water open with these, but they're not running around with a sharp knife that's going to cause injury to them. Another thing I find useful for my child that most children, they really think this is a cool item and they can use it very easily, is one of these survival filter straws. They can use this to get clean water if you run out of your packs and you need to be able to drink water and it filters out Giardia, Cryptosporidium, any of the bad things that you don't want your child to drink. Glow sticks. Your kids love these. You can put a few of these in here. They know how to, most kids know how to use these. If not, you know how to show them. But this is an easy light source for them to carry and they think it's pretty cool and it can be a lot of fun for them you know, while serving the purpose of lighting up the area they're in at night time. Some of the other items I like to keep in my son's bug out bag is some sort of survival bag. Now you can get the small mylar silver looking you know, emergency bags at Walmart or any other place for really cheap. I like this one. Um, it's a uh, Pro Force emergency survival bag. They're nice because it's like a little sleeping bag, but it has the mylar inside it, so it reflects body heat back in it. It's easier than trying to carry a sleeping bag for your child. And it's something he can easily take out and climb inside and stay warm. Speaking of warmth, I really like these uh, hot spots. You can get these through emergency essentials or from other camping and hiking supply stores. They're gel filled and they come with a metallic disc inside. Your kids push the little metallic disc and the whole bag starts to heat up. It's easy for warmth. They can put it in their pocket, inside their jacket, in their sleeping bag, and it'll keep them warm and they're reusable. So after it's crystallized up and it's used up, you just drop it in some boiling water and it'll go right back to the gel state and you can use it over and over and over again. Some more items I keep in the bag, more food. The thing you gotta remember about little guys is they don't eat three meals a day the way we do. They graze throughout the day, they snack all day long, and they'll eat when they're hungry. And that could be every 20 minutes, um, depending on the age of your child. So some of the other snack items I keep in here for my son, I have hot cocoa mix, and I have the mac and cheese that you just boil and add the powder to. All you gotta do is boil water. He loves that stuff. What kid doesn't like macaroni and cheese? I have more of the squeezy pouches. Um, I really love these Mylar squeezy pouches. They're easy to eat on the go. Um, they're just twist off lids. Kids can operate them very easily. And there's no preparation needed. The, the food is already cooked and ready to eat. Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff in your bag, don't we? I keep Mylar um, ramen noodles in here because my son loves ramen noodles and they're easy to boil up. What kid doesn't like noodles? Yeah, we got cars in your bag, don't we? I also keep a plate to go with these utensils I showed you earlier. Um, this is something easy for him to eat off of. It's plastic, it's easy to wash. No, you cannot put it in the fire because it's not metal, but this is something he's familiar with and he will enjoy eating off of because it's his. I keep other snack items in here as comfort foods. Some little candies, chewing gum, gummies, crackers, any type of little snack food that will hold. What do you see? Yeah, in a minute because children need comfort items. You want to keep them from being stressed out in a scary situation. You want to be able to give them something that they're familiar with or something that might make them happy, whether that's a little piece of candy or some chewing gum. Keep some of that in your bag for your son. Okay, we're back. As you notice, my son was out here just a minute ago with us, and it's about that time of day where it's nap time. And that's something else you need to remember about little guys when you're out traveling and bugging out is they need naps. They, they, they get tired very, very easily and they still need naps. They're not like us where they can push through and endure being tired and wet and cold and hungry. Kids are creature comforts. It's exactly what they need. And if he needs nap time, they need nap time. So you need to think about making frequent stops when you're bugging out with children. Make sure you can find a place where they can take a nap and rest and, and just relax for a little bit because a whiny, crazy, crazy, crazy uh, upset child is not something you would be bugging out with. Um, it's easier to make a frequent stop, let them rest, um, let them regain um, some energy and, and their thoughts and, and get calmed down because if you try to bug out and your child's loud and rambunctious and noisy, that doesn't help with your security situation if you're trying to stay quiet or not be found by whoever, whether it's zombies or foreign troops or whatever your survival situation is. Um, Loud children are loud, they're noisy, so you have to take that into account for planning. Okay, we still got more stuff in this bag to go through, so I'm going to continue to show you what's in here. We were just talking about creature comforts and keeping your kid happy. 
I have a bag here. Again, I keep everything in little bags. They're easy for your kid to get to and uh, easy to access. And that means he's not out digging through a bag trying to find something. It's so much easier if you have everything in little Ziploc bags. But I have a fun bag in here for my son. I have all kinds of little toys in here. I have crayons and paper in here for him. Pictures of mom and dad, grandma and grandpa. These are, are great for kids because this makes them feel uh, safe having photos of their family members. Plus, if they ever get lost, they could show somebody, hey, this is my mom and dad, or this is grandma and grandpa, or this is uncle or niece or nephew, whoever they're with. If they have a picture of that, they can maybe help find your child if, if they ever get separated from you. Um, I have little, his favorite little race cars and toys in here. Little bouncy balls, little toys and things like this that are easy to carry and compact. It will make your child happy. Um, they'll keep them busy. Um, I have a whistle in here. Kids love whistles. They think of them as a toy, but this is also great that if they should get separated, if you teach your child to use it, they can use a whistle and maybe you can find them if they're separated out in the woods or down the street or in a huge building, wherever you're at, and you need to go find a child, a whistle is a good idea. Um, something else that, even though it's in the fun bag, is kind of a necessity is some form of flashlight. Um, battery power flashlights are nice, but if you're like my son, he leaves them on all the time and the batteries go dead. So it's easier for me to get him a little dynamo crank flashlight, with an on and off switch that's easy to operate. Comes in a little keychain, you can attach it onto a belt or the backpack for them to be able to find it, but it's not going to go dead. And kids love being able to wind things up. It, to them, it's not a, a tedious chore, it's something fun to do, and it serves a purpose of creating light. Um, something that some people may not think of is having some earplugs of some sort in your bag for your child. My child is very noise sensitive. He doesn't like loud cars or gunshots or people yelling and screaming or loud machinery or anything that's noise like that. It, it bothers him. Kids are sensitive to loud sounds, uh, fireworks, anything like that. So having some earplugs in here for them is a good idea because this will lower some of the uh, sound that is bothering them and they won't be as upset. Um, something else my child really loves that is creature comfort for him is a tube of chapstick. Yeah, it's cheap and yet yeah, simple, but he likes having chapstick. It makes him feel comfortable. Uh, most people don't like having dry parched lips. Your child doesn't either. So have a little fun bag for them. Something that they can play. Little games in here, little storybooks, whatever you want to put in here that your child likes to do is a good idea. Okay, now I have a hygiene bag in here as well for my child. Just like everybody else, they get dirty, and if you have a little boy like me, playing in the mud is a frequent occurrence. So you want to be able to clean your child and keep them healthy and, and sanitize um, their hands and things like that, because you're going to be touching everything out in the woods, and it's just not a good thing. We don't want him to get sick. So I keep some bug spray in here for my child, because ticks and fleas and things like that, and mosquitoes are not good with little kids. They don't need to get sick, and it's uncomfortable. They don't need the itching and scratching. And speaking of itching and scratching, I also keep some cortisone. This is easy to roll on. Um, antihistamine, it stops the, uh, you know, it's hydrocortisone. It, it's good for anti-itch and things like that. So having a couple of those in, in a bag is good for your kid. I keep some toothpaste and a finger brush. You can get collapsible and miniaturized toothbrushes put in here if your child is um, old enough for a bigger toothbrush. I have a smaller one. It's easy to get in there and brush their teeth, especially if they're uncooperative like my child. But keeping their teeth clean, you don't want an abscess, they don't need an infection, especially for children because there's no dentist out in the woods. Um, towels and soap. Now some people would prefer to probably put a couple washcloths in here, that you could do that. Um, I have a little hotel bar soap, you can get those at your hotels, you can find some at you know the grocery store. You could even shave down your own bar soap at home into a smaller size and wrap it up with some plastic. Um, these easy towels, you can find these online, uh, purchase them. They're dehydrated and compact, so they look like little tablets. As soon as you put them in water, they expand into a nice towel, and you can you know, wash and bathe with that. Um, nice item to have, very compact. Um, hand sanitizer, um, you can get this anywhere. Everybody loves this stuff, so get some hand sanitizer, put it in here. It's easy to sanitize your kids' hands with. Um, you can also use it to start fires if you, you you want to watch that video later on, I'm sure Survival Mike will do one on using hand sanitizer as a fire source. Um, so you can go get you know the small travel size bottles of shampoo, lotion, 
um, soap, things like that. You want to get some of these you find in the travel aisle. Um, I have some safety pins in here. Um, my kid is in potty training still, so I have some cloth diapers and pens in here for potty training needs. But you can also use, you know, safety pins for other items. You can make a fishing lure out of it. You can do all kinds of different things with safety pins. Okay, I'm going to get into the main compartment of this bag. You probably noticed a little doggy sitting here on top. Um, children love stuffed animals. If they have a favorite lovey or stuffed animal, you should probably try and get a duplicate to keep in your child's bug out bag because God forbid you leave home without the lovey. It's a nightmare waiting to happen. Don't do it. <laughs> I've done it. Don't make the same mistake. Have the double lovey in the bag for the child. Um, now again, I was talking about how my child's in potty training. Um, if your child is older and not in potty training and, and is already past that point, um, you won't need some of this stuff. So I'm going to show you what I have in here because he is in the potty training, training stage and I keep some diapers. I have a small pack. You can go to The Honest Company. Um, you can find them on Facebook or the internet. They uh, sell smaller packages and free samples. Um, you pay shipping to get the sample, but they'll send you some diapers and they're already packaged up, which is nice. Uh, that's where I got my pack from. Um, there's like six or seven diapers in here. Um, anytime there's free samples or the little thin packs of refillable diaper wipes, I pick them up anywhere I can and I keep them in here. Not just for the diaper needs, but you can also bathe and do hygiene with these. Um, they're just really, really nice to have. Um, children need to stay clean even if they're out in the woods. Uh, now remember I showed you the uh, safety pins earlier. I also have backup diapers because eventually these are going to run out. You can't reuse them. You may not be able to get to a store where you can get more diapers that are disposable. So I carry some cloth diapers. The old fashioned way with the way grandma did it. Button them up, ready to go. You can wash these out and uh, be ready to go after they dry out. Um, they also serve other purposes. Uh, maybe your kid likes a, a cloth diaper as a lovey. Um, you could pad these inside their clothing for warmth. Um, you can use this for bathing. Uh, you could filter water through it. Cloth diapers have tons of purposes. Uh, you can use it for wound care. Uh, just, I can't say enough good things about cloth diapers. Get yourself some. They're worth it. Um, now, I keep in here in little skivvy rolls. Clothes. Now, my son, I've got underwear and socks for him. I have a hat because kids need to have something on their head to keep the sun out of their face. Um, if you want to throw in a pair of sunglasses or something for your child, um, that's a good idea. The um, sun in their eyes is not a good thing. I have my son's own little BDU set here. I used his belt, as you notice, to tie up the whole little skivvy roll. Um, makes it easier to compact it and cinch it down to put it in here. But I have a whole set of clothes in here for him. I've got some shirts and, of course, camo colors. So a set of BDU pants and a BDU top. Now, they do make these in all sizes for children. You can get these from uh, toppers. T-O-P-P-E-R-S, um, they sell them online, and they are probably the only company out there who specializes in making BDUs in different multicam and woodland and digital and ECU colors for children. Um, I don't see too many other surplus dealers dealing in children's size clothing, so you want to go to toppers. Um, one of the last things I keep in this pack that's easy to get to is a miniature first aid kit. Now you're not going to get a first aid kit that has a whole surgical kit and you know trauma wound pack and, and things like that because your child doesn't know how to use that. So I get them a small little basic kit that you can get at any grocery store, uh, Walmart, any, any basic store which should have a first, first aid kit. It's got alcohol wipes, it's got some band-aids, some neosporin, little stuff to treat little wounds. But you know if, how kids are, so they get a little boo-boo, they're going to want a band-aid. So it's good to have some in here. Um, you, they also usually come with a accident card where you can put emergency contact info. Write down you know, your contacts on here so your, if your kid gets separated, they can give that to somebody and say, here, call my mom and dad. Um, but that's nice to have for your child. And I usually keep it right here where it's easy to get to. Now remember, with this pack, I have the, all the diaper stuff in there I just showed you. Now if, if your child's past the potty training, you can take all that out and put a bunch of other stuff in there that you'd like. If you want extra clothing, extra food, extra water, you can put all that in the place of where I have diaper stuff. But for right now, that is my child's needs and that's why it's in his bag. Um, this is not an inclusive bag by any means. Um, plenty of you have different needs for your child. Maybe you have multiple children that you're trying to do a bag for. Um, you're going to have to carry some of their gear for them. 
um, sometimes they can't carry the bag. Well, the nice thing about this bag is one, you can cinch it to fit your child if they are of the age where they can carry their own pack. If not, a lot of, all these are Molly compatible, so you should be able to hook this onto your pack. Yeah, it's extra weight for you and it's extra bulkiness for you, but this is for your child and you gotta take care of your kid. Another thing I keep on his pack, I keep a canteen cup and cover, carry some extra water, but some of that food I was telling you about, the cup that's down in here is going to be where you boil out your water and, and make those macaroni and cheese noodles and the cup doesn't want to come out. There it is. It's down in here. It's just jammed in pretty good. Um, this is something you would have to help your child with. Um, older children could probably get this cup and, and everything out of here. Little fingers are not gonna, necessarily going to get it out very easily. But that cup is in there so you can boil water for your child. You can boil down the noodles or whatever you're cooking for your child. And that's in there. And you want to carry a canteen as well so they have some water source. But this is just a basic big out bag for my child. Again, he's three years old, so I ate the whole pack around his needs and what he um, would need to be out in the woods with me or his dad. Um, my pack is much bigger than this. I'm going to be carrying Daytrix bars, extra water, knives, cordage, shelter. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have it all in my pack, and I know I'm going to be humping that because that's my weight. He, on the other hand, this is all about taking care of his needs. I've got his medicine in here. I've got clothes in here for him. I've got his diaper needs for right now. I've got his creature comforts and his toys that will make him happy and keep him um, feeling good about being out and surrounded somewhere else. Closing thoughts on this bag, you can get any type of bag you want. If you want a regular school backpack that you use for your child and that's their, what they want to do, you can use that. You don't have to have a military bag. But remember, whatever you're doing, it's never too early to start training with your kids. Get them out there in the woods, teach them how to use their bag, show them what's in their bag so they know what's in here and where to find it. Show them how to build a shelter. Show them how to go and, and, and build a fire and do things with you. It's never too early to start learning. Plus the kids, they get to spend time with you and that's what's really important. So they get to spend time with mom and dad, they're learning valuable skills. Knowledge weighs nothing, so you might as well take advantage of it. And little children, they're sponges. They absorb tons of knowledge. So teach your children, teach them early, teach them often. I'm Sarah from the School of Self-Reliance. I'll be doing more videos in the future. Hope you join us for those uh, videos in the future here. Uh, make sure you like our channel, subscribe, share our videos. You can find us on Facebook. You can visit our website. They'll be in the closing links. And you can find Prep Club on the WordPress is our blog if you would like to subscribe for some uh, good uh, self-reliance articles. Thanks for watching. Come back and see us again.